Without this system that I'm gonna tell you about, you wouldn't be able to breathe inside an aircraft. But what is it? Hi guys, it's Aviation here, and today I'm gonna explain how the pressurization system actually works. Stay till the end because this video is gonna be so interesting, I promise. To start with the beginning, let's learn about the human limits. We adapted to the oxygen capacity that we can find on the ground, where are plenty of oxygen molecules to actually sustain human life. The problem is that the more you go up in altitude, those oxygen molecules get further and further from each other, making it harder to breathe. We can breathe normally till 10,000 feet. That's not a problem when we are talking about small planes, because they don't cruise at a higher level. But when we are talking about the commercial planes that most people use, we are talking about a cruise level, an average cruise level, of around 36,000 feet. That's insane. At that level, you wouldn't be able to last more than a few minutes. Not like you can last more on the ground, but we are talking about another thing here. So in order to be able to breathe, the aircraft needs to pressurize the air and bring those oxygen molecules closer to each other. Now the interesting things start, and I really want you to listen closely. You understood that air is pressurized, but where, like, where does it come from? It's easy, the engines. As you may know, jet engines work by sucking air. The biggest part of that air is heated up and eliminated through the other part of the engine creating thrust. But a small fraction of that air enters a compressor. Most of the time, two compressors from two different engines. Here, the air is compressed until it uh, gets to a density that is sustainable for human uh, breathing. After this, because that air is too hot, it has to be cooled off, of course. For this, it actually enters a refrigeration process done by what we call in aviation, packs. It's bring to room temperature and it's sent to the cabin. You may think that the process is over, but believe me, you have a lot of more things to actually hear. By the way, if you're liking the content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to see more videos like this. It helps me so much. Now, after this process, you can breathe inside the cabin. But too much air is too much. And if the aircraft catches too much pressure, it's gonna explode just like a balloon. So that's why in the back of almost any aircraft with a pressurized uh, cabin, you can find this small flap that basically controls the air exiting the aircraft. To make this easier, when the plane takes off, that flap is closed, and when it lands, that flap is open. At cruise level, it's subjective, but let's say that it's a little bit open to, of course, control that air. Now let me tell you about a very cool feature that almost any plane has. The air inside the cabin is actually recycled, but first, why? The bigger the fraction of suck air from the jet engine goes in the compressor, the more fuel consumption. So in order to save that fuel, um, aircrafts tend to reuse their pressurized air. But how? On the floor of almost any aircraft, you can find this small vent that basically sucks the air, compress it again, and then release it in the cabin. That is so cool, isn't it? Now that you kind of understood the system, how pressurized this air actually is. To get the cabin altitude, you can basically divide the altitude by 4. Let's say 36,000 feet divided by 4. 90,000 feet. So if you are at the cruise level or a 360, you breathe the air density that can be found at 9,000 feet. Even though it would be possible to compress the air to have its density equal to the, to the one that we can find on the sea level, it would actually harm the aircraft and there is no purpose for that because the pilots get used to it and the passengers don't stay on the, uh, on the aircraft for weeks or something like this. Now that you understood how this works, what happens if it fails? Because it's kind of a major problem. For first, those uh, oxygen masks that you can find on the ceiling of the aircraft basically pop out of their socket. Through those, the passengers and the pilots can breathe up to 14 to 20 minutes, time when pilots can basically do an emergency descent. But the problem is when the aircraft is doing an um, over ocean flight, where you, of course, you can descend to 10,000 feet, but the more you descend, the more fuel consumption. That's why planes that fly over oceans are equipped with so much fuel 
on board. Thank you for listening to me. I really hope that you learned something new today and see you next time. By the way, thank you so much for those numbers that I got on my videos. That's absolutely insane in two weeks, right? Three weeks. I mean, close to three weeks of YouTube, 23 subscribers and the 260 views on the Japan Airlines flight that I really, really recommend you to watch. I have absolutely no words to thank you guys. And as usual, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and I would be really pleased to read your comments. Thank you so much, guys, and see you next time. Bye.